from Los Angeles. It's the Tom Likas Show. You dog on skipping. And now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Right down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show brought to you in part by the girl next door in theaters this Friday. The girl next door, by the way, is providing $500 in cash to a random caller that makes it on the air this hour. In fact, all you have to do is ask for the money. We did this yesterday an hour. No one asked for the money. We gave it to someone anyway, but nonetheless. That's 500 smackaroos from The Girl Next Door, The Ultimate Guy Fantasy, starring Alicia Cuthbert from 24. It's in theaters this Friday. I have an email from a listener named Jesse. Jesse writes and it says, Hi, Father. Jesse uh, and Angelino, as you can tell by the first sentence in his email. Wow. How about our Dodgers? Of course, anybody who follows baseball knows there's just a hint of irony in that line. He says it is now $10 just to park. It's $8 for a beer, maybe more this year. Tickets go as high as $50 plus now. To get a hot dog, nachos, beer, and a bag of peanuts will cost over 20 bucks. I know you'll agree, Dad. We won't be getting one beer. Let's try six, which equals $48. I could buy a cake for $48. I love all sports except soccer, but who counts that as a sport? You're a fine American, Jesse. I grew up watching, playing, and betting on them like all men do. But I've had it. I just can't afford going to a sporting event anymore. I make about 30000 make that $35,000 a year before taxes, so I'm certainly not rich. But I'm not super poor either. No wife, no kids, Dad. I always listen to you. I will not pay to go to another professional sporting event until prices go down. The sad thing is my actions won't do much. People are so desperate for entertainment... They'll pay anything. If everyone would get together and not go to a baseball game for one season, you would see some changes. Like that's ever going to (laughs) happen. He says, think about if me and three of my buddies went to a game, we would spend at least $120 a person or $480 total. We could all just watch the game at home, drink like fish, barbecue some great steaks, have chicks over, get laid, not drink and drive, and still spend less than we would for watching a three-hour game with players I don't even recognize anymore. Your son, Jesse. Jesse, I feel your pain. I go to a lot of sporting events. A lot. And I have uh, now seen the $10 beer. I mean, that's that's absurd. When you realize that even at an expensive store, a six-pack of Heinies is like six ninety-nine. To see one in a plastic cup for ten dollars is remarkable, and I have seen it. I have seen the three dollar and fifty cent stripped down plain old hot dog. I have seen, well, it's $10 to park at Dodger Stadium, but I've paid $15 and even $20 to park at sporting events. And forget about the cost of hats or other souvenirs, ice cream, booze, if you can find it at the ballpark anymore, which uh, I guess it's politically incorrect now to serve booze, so they kind of hide it. We went to a Seattle Seahawks game last year and had to walk about 14 miles 
from our seats in the end zone all the way up into uh, the stratosphere to find a drink. And then when we got it, we weren't allowed to leave the area with it. We had to stand where you could not see the game and drink it. Like we were being punished by being put in a penalty box or a jail cell. We had to stand in this area where you could not see the game. And is that enough to make you feel like a confirmed alcoholic? It's like going to one of those bars with no windows. You're so desperate to get a drink. You go to one of these speakeasy-looking places. Seattle Seahawks game. We had to go up to the very tippy, tippy, toppy, toppy of the stadium where they had the one and only place open to the public to buy booze. And then they had a little white picket fence. I'm not making this up. If you've been to a Seahawks game, you've seen it. They had a little white picket fence around the area in which you had to stand to drink your drinky drink before you could uh, get, leave the area and then watch the game. I mean, it was like going up to smoke crack or smoke opium or something. You had to go up to the little area where all the alcoholics go. Like a bad boy, you had to stand in, in suspension there, drinking your drink. Then you would leave having gotten your buzz on and you would walk... 50 miles back to your seats. Who comes up with these ideas anyway? I have no idea. How much were those drinks? Don't even ask. <laughs> Don't even ask. Now, as you know, your genial host makes a very good living standing here and blabbing at you every day. So, um, you know, even though a $10 beer is ridiculous... Uh, it's never stopped me from buying one if I wanted one. But I understand because for more years than I've been a big mouth radio personality, I was a nearly broke artiste who uh, couldn't find a job. And I was living off my friend's uh, sympathy and charity, borrowing subway and bus tokens from them and stuff. And so uh, I know what it's got to be like going to the game, trying to go with your buddies and have a beer, or worse yet, God forbid your uh, wife tricked you into having kids and you have to take your kids to the game. Yeah, it's one thing to um, spend $30, $40, $50 on a ticket to take your buddy. But when you take a kid who has no interest in watching the event, just wants to go and buy cotton candy and popcorn and, um, you know, 350 hot dogs and whatever, I don't know how you do it. Now, it seems to me at sporting events, what is happening? is a major shift used to be i knew people who had season tickets to sporting events when we had football here in los angeles i knew people who had ram season tickets or raiders season tickets and years ago i feel like i knew more people who had baseball season tickets and stuff but what seems to be happening now correct me if i'm wrong is Many people now go to the game because the company they work for has bought season tickets and doles them out. So, for example, if you live in Los Angeles, your boss is taking the clients to see the Dodgers play the San Francisco Giants or the Atlanta Braves. And uh, you will get the Monday night tickets or the Tuesday night tickets to watch the Pittsburgh Pirates or the Tampa Bay Devil Rays come in. Right? That's what happens. Can I tell you how many times I've been invited to a suite at the game, right? I get invited. I've been to the suites many times. I don't own a suite. I get invited to the suite. And what happens is the people who invite me, it, it, it's never a critical or crucial game, ever. If it's the Lakers, it's the Lakers playing the Orlando Magic. If it's the Dodgers, it's the Dodgers playing the Montreal Expo. If it's the Angels, it's the, not the Angels and the Red Sox. It's not the Angels and the A's. It's not the Angels and the Seattle Mariners. No, no. It'll be the uh, it'll be the Angels and those same Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Or the Chicago White Sox. Or some other lousy team. So what has happened now is corporate America is buying up all the good seats at the games... And then doling out the good ones to the clients, and the lousy ones go to the employees. So what happened is your boss paid the, I don't know, 40, 50 bucks a ticket for you to sit in the suite or the 
company box. And that means all you have to do is buy the remaining $10 beers and pay the 8 or 10 or $15 for parking, depending on the event. And uh, you no longer get to pick the games you're going to go to. You're going to go to the ones the boss sends you to. Now, of course, when you look at uh, the attendance for sporting events, they report huge attendance. Baseball reports huge attendance. Football, of course, always reports sellouts or near sellouts. The NBA generally reports uh, almost sold-out conditions. Of course, you wonder how many of those people actually showed up. Are these tickets sold or are these actual bodies in the seats? Who knows? Many times, because I've got the satellite dish and I have every major league sport, and I don't consider soccer a major league sport, I've got every major league team sport on my dish, and I'm frequently tuned into these games where they're reporting, you know, a, a baseball game where they're reporting 30,000 in attendance. And then as you're watching the game, you see the batter and behind him, behind home plate, all these empty seats. I mean, it, you know, if the seats behind home plate aren't full, how many people actually showed up? Who knows? But I'm wondering if the price, uh, not only of the tickets to the sporting events, but the price of parking and the price of uh, souvenirs and the price of beer and the price of hot dogs, I wonder if that's priced you out of the market. By the way, you know the teams are getting desperate, and you know they're trying to cover up for lousy financial conditions. They're not doing as well as they'd like you to believe, because, for example, maybe this happens to one of your teams if you don't live in Southern California. You hear Vin Scully announcing on the Dodger games all the time that if you buy two reserve or loge season tickets in designated areas, meaning be on the foul pole, you get two free. <laughs> now, do they count as paid attendance? I don't understand. I mean, I, I just want to report that when I first came to live permanently in Los Angeles in 1988, that was the year the Kirk Gibson home run. And I called the Dodgers. When I got to town, the first thing I did, I wanted to see a Dodger game. And I called Dodger Stadium. And in fact, I just wanted to buy a pair of tickets to a game. So I called up and I said, what are the best seats you have? And the woman at the other end of the phone said, <laughs> You want tickets? <laughs> you can't just call up here and get tickets. <laughs> We've been sold out for a long time. So now, you know, you see the Dodgers claiming they've got 38,000 in attendance every game. But uh, there's Vin Scully telling you, buy two tickets, get two free. What does that mean? I don't know. Or just about every team now in uh, every league has one of those... Uh, um, you know, of course, they tell you tickets are 80 bucks or 100 bucks to get in. But then they've got um, those deals you always see where it's like you can get uh, four tickets, four parking passes, four popcorns, four Pepsis, four copies of the newspaper, four hot apple pies, you know, for 79 bucks, whatever. Four pizzas. <laughs> like, you know, they just want to maintain the uh, the appearance of having high prices. Uh, kind of like my, uh, my 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 wine country where I love to go. You know, they love to tell you a bottle of Cabernet is 100 bucks, But nobody's paying 100 bucks. Nobody. Nobody with a brain is paying 100 bucks for a bottle of wine. Forget it. So I'm wondering what this is all done to uh, your uh, interest in going to sporting events. Anywhere in America, wherever you are, wherever you travel, uh, are you going as much? Do you go less? Do you now get your tickets from the boss and go watch all the worst games? And that's what's happening a lot, you know. You know, how many people are, you know, hey, hey, how would I go see the Clippers? You know? <laughs> that's because the boss bought the Clipper tickets so that he could get good seats for the Lakers, for Sacramento, for San Antonio, for Indiana, Minnesota, all the good teams. And then uh, you can see the Clippers playing the Orlando Magic. Funny, the Orlando Magic keep coming up. I don't know. So anyway, I'm wondering. Uh, do tell me. I mean, has um, has the uh, skyrocketing price of going to a game changed your game attending habits? Some like it. 
I don't think you're anything like your air personality. Maybe this is just a small slice of the whole pie. Good or bad? I guess I have to leave that up to the rest of humanity to decide. The Tom Likas Show. On... Here we go. The Tom Likas Show on 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Lisa. Hey, Tom. Lisa. We used to go to everything, not just sporting events, but venues, rock concerts, everything, and we didn't care how far we sat back and how much money we spent. And now it's, we're just on the exact extreme opposite. Mm-hmm. We'd rather be on our comfortable couch with our cheap beer. Yeah. It still tastes good. And Not only that, now the uh, quality of your TV screen has improved so much. My God, if you've got a nice big color TV or oh, yeah. these flat, screens flat screens or something, yeah, I, I have HD TV at home. Are you kidding me? Exactly. Oh, it's like being there. It's better than being there. And then, like, corporate America is turning into religious America, and they're taking away all of the booze from everywhere. Yeah. Well, I don't think they're doing it for religious reasons. I think they're doing it for liability reasons. I think they're afraid that you'll get drunk and drive and sue them. Well, yeah, but, like, anything that Disney owns, I think, now they don't serve alcohol there. And that used to What, they don't serve uh, alcohol at, like, a Mighty Ducks game? Yeah, like the Anaheim Pond, yes. They don't serve booze there? No, they do not. You have to go across the street to the brewery. you got to be <laughs> kidding me. go back, yes. So what kind of game is that? Not a game at Hockey all. Hockey is about banging the glass and boozing. What, are you kidding me? Exactly. Yikes. Hey, Tom. Yes, Lisa. How about that 500 bucks for the girl next door? Oh, see, you noticed. And you I asked. Noticed. And you remember the name of the movie. Of course. All right, then you're going to get it. I love all you. All you had to do was ask. And I did it. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Tom. Blow me up. Here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Michelle on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hi. Um, I used to live in Wisconsin and go to the Brewers games all the time, and it's so much fun. Like, parking lot would be full. You're tailgating all your The parking lot was full? You were not at a Brewers game. Yes, I was. No, no, you weren't. No, you weren't. The Brewers never had a full parking lot. Come on. <laughs> they did. They Come on. They must have had parking for the auto show nearby or something. No, they didn't. My point is just that, like, other places you go, you tailgate, it's like a totally social thing. Here you go to a Dodger game, it's so boring. You can't, like, hang out in the parking lot at all. You can't. You just have to go in, watch the game, and it's just, it's a downer. So they don't allow tailgating at the parking lot of Dodger Stadium? I don't think so, no. I don't know. Nobody I, does it. I've never tried to do it. Parking lot's empty. I think part of the reason people don't tailgate is because they don't get to the game till the second inning. Well, you can't because the freeway's so jammed. Well, all right, but I mean, I, 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 I've never seen a ban on tailgating. There may be one, but I think the main reason people don't tailgate is because I don't know very many people who get to the Dodger game in time for the first pitch. Yeah. Well, I think that kind of just makes the game. I don't know. Other places I've lived, especially, like, in the Midwest, it's, like, more of, like, it's an outing, you know? You, like, go and you eat, and it's, like, a whole event. Yeah. Here it's like, well, in a Milwaukee you know, Brewers game, it would have to be. How bad have they been for how long? Unbelievable. Hey, Michelle, thanks for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. The Tom Likas Show. This is the Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. The Tom Likas Show brought to you in part by The Girl Next Door in theaters on Friday. The Girl Next Door gave away $500 in cash this hour. There's someone who made it on the air, and it'll happen again in another hour of the show at some point in time. It's $500 in cash. From The Girl Next Door, The Ultimate Guy Fantasy, starring Alicia Cuthbert from 24 at theaters Friday. But we gave the money away this hour already, so... Stop harassing Dean. Okay, stop. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Um, are you at your wit's end trying to afford going to a sporting event? Because uh, the prices are insane. Pat on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing today? I'm okay, Pat. Oh, that's good, Tom. Man, I can't believe this, Tom. I remember growing I'm 24 years old. I remember growing up as a little kid, watching my brothers go to the sporting games, getting hammered, getting kicked out. You know, me, I'm 24, finally able to go, drink beer, and beer's like 10 bucks for a little glass. Come on now, that's outrageous. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. 
10 bucks for parking, 10 bucks for a beer. Man, I like to eat. I can't even eat a nacho and a hot dog anymore. Yeah. It's outrageous. I can't afford this stuff. You know, I'm a manager at an amusement park, and, you know, I make all right money. But come on, this is outrageous. I have to settle to go to, uh, you know, out here in Quake Stadium. And here I got to pay five dollars a beer here yeah. at Quake Stadium at a single A game. Yeah, what well, they call it, the epicenter. The epicenter. Yeah, the, the, the Quakes uh, are a minor league team. They play in yeah, San Bernardino. And they're horrible, you know. No, I Rancho know. Cucamonga. They're in Rancho Cucamonga. Exactly. I'm out yeah. here in the Inland Empire. I got to. If I want to go to a Dodger game, I got to sit in two hours with the traffic. You know, I can't even go to a game anymore, Tom. What's going on here? Yeah, well, I know what you mean. A lot of people are saying the same thing here. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Ralph on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Ralph. Man, cheat out, man. This past Sunday, Clippers versus Utah. I got tickets from the company, man. Uh -huh. I'm sitting there, boring as game ever. Well, it happened to be there was a celebrity game after. More people stuck around to see the celebrity game than the Clipper game, man. There are probably more recognizable people playing in that game. <laughs> exactly. You know, I tried to get some food in there, blowing like 40 bucks for me and my bro, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Yeah. You know, it's like I was in there almost like knocking out by the, by the half. Yeah. And I'm like, unbelievable, man. Yeah. These, these tickets, you know, these companies, like today, I, I delivered for a... For a company today, I deliver like the good Laker tickets for the game tonight, you know, and probably, I'll probably get the Clipper games for next week or something. That's right, but somebody else is going to the Laker game tonight, right? Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah well, your boss uh, is seeing all the your boss is seeing all the good games. Trust me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, Ralph. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Pretty good, Mike. I was at uh, the L.A. Canucks game on um, uh, March 24th. Uh-huh. It was $900 for one day for me and my kids. $900? How many people went? Three. So how much were the tickets alone? 271 for three tickets. Uh-huh. Behind, behind the goalie, not even great seats. The uh, We live in Victoria, so the ferry was 100 bucks. Hotel was 120 By the way, that's more expensive than L.A., even when you translate it from Canadian to American dollars. I, it's, a, it's outrageous. A jersey for my kid was 200 bucks for his first game. Uh, food, beer was $7 a glass, not a pint, yeah. a glass. Yeah. Hamburger and fries for my kid, 10 bucks plus tax. Uh-huh. 900 bucks to see one hockey game. Yeah, well, we were at GM Place earlier this year, so uh, I, I feel your pain. Uh, it's a uh, very nice arena, but wow, is it expensive. I actually spoke to Brian Burke on the radio here locally about uh, two months ago and, and about the pending lockout strike. Yeah. And uh, I said, you know, no one wants it, but if that's what it takes to, to get the prices down, um, it's necessary. Well, you let's see if the, let's see if the prices go down. See, they won't go down, of course not. No, they're they not. Uh, if, if by the way, Brian Burke is the president of the Vancouver Canucks hockey team, and uh, uh, the fact is that uh, if the uh, teams get what they want, a salary cap uh, on the NHL uh, players, uh, all that's going to happen is they're going to keep what they've got now, they and, and, and 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 well, make. Some money, because uh, from right. what I read, only 11 hockey teams out of 30 made money last year. Well, are you aware that Vancouver Canucks pay more in tax than every U.S. team combined? No. That's a fact. Well, Canada loves taxes. Oh, tax, 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 tax. Yeah, yeah. Get that one more comment. Um, you helped me divorce my wife a few years back. You read my email on the air one day, and it was wonderful. And uh, thank you for all your work. You are my God. Well, thank you so much for that, Mike. I appreciate it. 1-800-5800-TOM. He's our telephone number, Alfonso. You're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, Tom. Yes, sir. You know, you're better off taking that money and going to Santa Anita or Hollywood Park and trying to make money. I mean, even at Santa Anita, after you go enough times, they send you free passes for the clubhouse, which yeah. is a really nice area. Yeah. And you get in there, hey, take that money you're going to spend watching the... You know, the Dodgers or the Clippers and try to make money. Yeah, don't they have, like, dollar hot dogs some days? And, uh, oh, yes, exactly. They got a lot of deals out there. Yeah. Yeah, on, on the summertime at Hollywood Park on uh, Friday night, I mean, it's a good place to go over there and pick up chicks. A lot of the young college girls go over there. Really? And, uh, like I said, a dollar beer, dollar hot dogs, dollar popcorn, and, like I said, you have the opportunity to make some money. Wow. 
Well, that's, uh, you know, again, if you like horse racing, if you like that atmosphere, it's it's a great bargain. I've been to the track a few times last couple of years. It's exciting. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's exciting down there. Yeah. And you can booze freely. They are, they're all about vice at the uh, horse race. They want you to drink. <laughs> that's right. They, they're exactly. just like Vegas. They want you to drink, baby. Exactly. But anyways, uh, yeah, I'll be nice to go down there and have a ball down there for the money. Absolutely. Well, Alfonso, thank you. Uh, by the way, uh, as Brett told us, and uh, a number of you have uh, called or emailed, uh, no tailgating at Dodger Stadium. Not allowed. At all. But as I said earlier, it, it, people don't get to the game here early anyway. Maybe that's why they don't get to the game early. Maybe because there's no tailgating. Maybe if there was tailgating, people would be there in the first inning. Maybe that's the problem. You know, the reason half the stands are empty in the first inning is because what's the point of getting there early? You can't tailgate. You can't grill out. You can't booze up. You can't meet your friends in lot 23 or lot 32 or lot 37 or whatever. Might as well just uh, get there at the last minute, sit there in traffic. You know, the later you get to the game, the earlier you, you leave, the less you spend. It's really true. You can stop off at Wiener Schnitzel on the way in, and then uh, you won't have to eat till the fifth inning, for God's sake. 1 800 5800 Tom is our telephone number. More of your telephone calls are coming up. <laughs> the top like is show. 1 800 5800 Tom is our telephone number. It's Pete on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hello. Tom. Hello, Pete. Long time listener. First time caller. Thank you so much. Hey, how's it going? Do you care, Pete? Uh, I, I do care. I'm doing great. Outstanding. Hey, Colin here from Portland. And we kind of have the opposite problem here. You know, we have the Portland Jail Blazers, and they, they can't give tickets away. You know, nobody wants to go. And on my company, they have a suite. And, you know, and every week they offer, you know, 10 tickets to this, 10 tickets to that. You can't give them away. It's ridiculous. Yeah, well, the Blazers, uh, you know, they promised a lot a few years ago, spent a lot of money on free agents. The team stunk. Now they stink they, more. Exactly. There's, you know, every week they're in and out of jail. But uh, but still, you know, still when you go there, you got the ten dollar hot dog, just like you say, mm -hmm. and the five dollar uh, or ten dollar beer. It's, yeah. it's just ridiculous, you know. And forget about buying a hat or, or or sweatshirt. It's just crazy. Yeah, and so nobody does. And nobody does. No, I mean it's just if you feel ashamed. Yeah, I have to go to Vancouver to see the Canucks play to to go to a real game. Wow, that's quite a drive. Uh, you're not talking Vancouver, Washington. That's quite a trip. <laughs> no, Vancouver, Canada. Yeah. Go Canucks. So that's hey, well, wait. Anyway, that's that's like that's like a six-hour drive, isn't it? It is. It is. It, it, it's a, it's a drive, but you know what? It's a good hockey game. We Probably take you less time to drive to San Jose to see a game. Well, yeah, that's a possibility too. Vancouver just a little bit closer though. Yeah. Wow. Hey. Anyway, Tom, have a good day. Thanks for taking my call. Pete, thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Jason on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jason. All right. I'm heading to the Lakers game tonight. The only reason I'm going is I got some free tickets through a vendor. Uh huh. And they're way too expensive to buy either way. Uh, yeah, well, uh, <laughs> that's what I think a lot of people are doing now. They Instead of choosing a game they want to go to and putting money down at the box office, they wait for the boss to come along and say, Hey, how would you like? It's the end of the season. How would you like to see the Clippers and the uh, some team you've heard of? Exactly. Yeah. So I'm heading in. I'm from Vegas. I'm going down uh, to the game tonight because I got some tickets from a friend of mine, a vendor, actually. The Clippers and the Miami Heat. There's a game. There you go. I'm excited. Woo-wee. <laughs> right on. Thank you, Tom. Jason, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's James on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, James. Hey, um, these, these athletes need to stop getting paid too much money. That's what it is. Well, they're paid too much money because the teams won't stop spending on, on the players. That's why they're paid so much money. Well, we need to stop going to those events, you know. But we won't. Everyone says this. You know, I've been hearing this all my life. You know, free agency started in the 70s. And ever since then, people have been saying, that's it. I'm not going to another game for the rest of my life. But they always do. Exactly. I do the same thing. But, you know, when they go on strike, we should let them stay on strike. Yeah, but but you know what? We always say that, don't we? And last time baseball went on strike, everybody said, that's it. I'm not going to another game. That's it. 
Then the steroid controversy comes up. That's it. I'm not going to another game. I mean, people say this all the time, but they're they're addicts. They can't stop. Another thing is we go get athletes from other countries when we have kids in this country that need to play ball too, you know? Well, maybe they do, but uh, who plays shortstop like a Dominican? Please. Oh, that's true. Right? I mean, you got to, and by the way, you get them cheap. They're not even in the regular draft. I mean, it's a great deal for baseball teams. Sign these kids when they're 16, lie and say they're 18. You know what they do. I, wasn't that uh, what happened with uh, Adrian Beltre, the uh, third baseman of the Dodgers? That when he came up, they said he was 19, and they think he was like 17. Well, they don't care. He looks big. He looks big enough. <laughs> That's it. That's it, Tom. All yeah. right. James, thank you so much. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I got a question for you, man. My girlfriend found my porn collection, and she's kind of mad at me. She thinks that masturbation is just like cheating. How old are you? I'm 18. At 18, masturbation is not only a birthright, it's a necessity. The Tom Likey Show. Yeah, the Tom Likey Show, 1-800-5800-TOM. Is the um, escalating cost of sporting events keeping you from going? Do you still go? What do you do? John on the Tom Likey Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, John. Hey, this is how I do it. I'm the cheapest mofo out there. Yeah. I, I First of all, this year I bought great season tickets for the Angels, sold them on eBay, and with that money I got to buy one, get one free up in the upper deck. Uh, just Saturday went to the game, and uh, I just uh, wait about third inning when uh, I look at the seats that aren't available, you know, that aren't being seated in, and me and whoever goes, my wife, buddies, just plop our butt in there. So you're telling me that the ushers at Angel Stadium uh, do not, uh, uh, like, harass you if you try to move down? Well, I make sure I go to the same ones because they think I have season tickets down below. They just don't know that I've been sneaking by them for the last, you know. Oh, so they see you so often they think you belong there. Exactly. I just, you know, I always brown nose them to death until they think I, uh, you know, go to every game. But in reality, I only go to, you know, 20 games a year. And are there certain I, seats that are available like every game? <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's seats, like you said, it's the, the ones that the boss hangs out. These are the ones that, you know, they hang out last second, nobody goes, and I just know which ones. You yeah. know, going there so many years, I know exactly uh, where the, you know, the, it's where the rich people sit. They mm -hmm. never, rich people always leave early. They have to say they go to the game to satisfy the boss so they can get more tickets and brown nose him. So I see them leave, I plop in their seats. I also bring in my own beer, uh, or I drink before. You so, bring in your own beer? How do you do that? So they search you now, don't they? Yeah, you I got... Well, I can't say too much because uh, who knows who's listening. But I have secret compartments. There's aluminum. A lot of times, don't ring up. Uh, you know, when they scan, like at the pond, uh, that doesn't show up. So you know, you just bring in cans, and then you have a tumbler cup. You put it in there. You know, I have a bag. You know, to sit. You know, one of those bags that you could sit strapped to the seat. Uh, so I have a tumbler cup in there, and it looks totally official. Right. In fact, Tom, Super Bowl two thousand dollars. I didn't pay a cent. I snuck into that. Uh, game six of the World You Series. snuck into the Super Bowl? I, yeah. So what you do, you you flew to the Super Bowl and then snuck in? Well, two of them in San Diego and then the one in Florida uh, when Miami, when uh, Broncos played Atlanta. We flew out there. I snuck into that game. Uh, game six of uh, when Anaheim was at the World Series, snuck into that. Two games of the Stanley Cup at the Pond, no problem. Uh, we call it third period upgrade. Rich people leave early. They want to go out. We take their seats. You know, it's. Wow. That's how you have to do it. You, you you just have to be creative and cheapy like me, and hopefully you marry somebody that doesn't mind doing it because they know that the money they're spending. Oh, yeah. What a drag know. when you have a wife going, yeah, honey, it's wrong to do this. It's wrong. Yeah. Then I, I leave her at home then if she starts that <laughs> crap. 1-800-5800-TOM. <laughs> Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Robert. Okay. Yeah, you, hit a, you hit a subject that is dear to my heart. I'm um, from Chicago originally, and I can't tell you how much the sports management there has sucked over decades. And By the way, I don't think it sucks. I think that uh, Chicago sports teams are mismanaged on purpose. Well, yeah, no, I agree. Because they, they know you guys are a bunch of suckers who will keep going to the games no matter what. Exactly, exactly. They manage just to make enough money, and, and, and they manage to not lose money. What I was uh, want to do, and I'm still going to work on, even though last year the Cubs took us all the way up to the last second, is to try and organize a, a 
sports fans boycott all the Chicago teams. Yeah, well, good luck on that. Because uh, I think uh, I think really because you're right. The the management knows that the, the sports fans will come back years after years, and they will take advantage of that to, uh, to as long as they can. And so sports fans get together and coordinate and say, look, you know, this is BS. But they're never going to do that. Well, that's what I that's why I hope that I mean, uh, hearing you talk like this just helps me inspire me a little bit more to get that website together and get that boycott together and say, look. You know, and and no one has ever it. succeeded at this, ever. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. Well, good luck to you, Robert. Chicago fans just keep going back like suckers. The Tom Likas Show.